Fuqua Avery in a middle school was invited to participate in the 2015-2016 Summer STEM Posium. For two consecutive years, we worked with the Wake Ed Partnership to implement a project-based learning initiative here at Fuqua Avery in a middle school. Our project was about project-based learning, which is basically giving kids the control to their own learning. They do projects, and our project was based off of food insecurity. The seventh graders, they had a task of coming up with a project that combated food insecurity, and the leading project was a talent show where the food entry was canned goods. Well, project-based learning is where we allow the kids to collaborate together on a common issue where they're able to develop their own ideas and apply them. In traditional schools, they have like lesson plans where teachers just talk and you have, and the students have to listen. And this way we had to be our own teachers and make up our own real rules and I liked it because you could be your own lead, you could be your own teacher with other people like group members and you didn't have to follow rules and specific things you had to do it's it's a lot different because you know regular instruction most of the time it's a worksheet and um, it's a teacher led instruction and this was more the students coming together and creating a project that um, was geared towards something that actually could happen versus just solving a bunch of math problems or looking at a map. Um, this was something that they could actually um, collect the funds and make happen and collect food for hungry families in Fuquay. Working with the Wake Ed Partnership, we were partnered with SAS and Red Hat, two local Triangle area companies, to learn about skills they thought students needed to be successful in the 21st century. Regular instruction is a bit more structured um, and teacher directed. This time it gave the kids um, an opportunity to make their own plan. They were able to manage their time. Um, they were able to give each other roles, uh, what they wanted to do in the project. So it kind of gave turned over the um, instruction to them versus me standing up, talking to them, giving them direct instruction, um, and it was a less rudimentary form. We, we proposed to the students um, about hunger and what does it mean to be hungry versus, um, you know, where's your next meal um, versus sitting in class and being hungry at two o'clock in the afternoon. So we worked with them on um, the needs of our, our local community here in Fuquay and the hunger issues that students have that they may not know about. Okay, so the project we did, basically, we had to find ways to help those in our community who are suffering food insecurity. That was the project this time. Teachers, they kind of decided to let us kind of run how we learn instead of them just giving us an assignment and we have to solve it. Our seventh grade and our family and consumer sciences classes teamed up to create a cross-curriculum project looking at food insecurity in our own community. We felt it was important for our students to understand the needs of the people in the community that they live in. Fuquay Varina Middle School is in a unique location right in the middle of our own community and we felt it was important for students to understand how service learning can impact those around them. My name is Elizabeth DeHerde and I'm a career and technical education teacher at Fuquay Verena Middle School. I was fortunate to attend the Wake Ed Partnership Summer STEM Symposium this summer and was amazed at all the opportunities that were provided and to help me gauge better opportunities for my students. Being able to meet with other teachers and having dialogues and, and time to reflect helped me want to invest with my students what we could do for our community, what could we do to help, and how we could bring that forth in the classroom. Well, you know, we had a lot of positive response. At first, they were kind of shocked to realize that people, you know, are going without food, you know, they're in their neighborhoods. and then they, that kind of got them excited to um, come up with solutions for it. The logistics of our project were pretty simple. At first, we taught the students about the ins and outs of food insecurity. How did it affect their health? How did it affect their own communities? We taught them about economics. We taught them about the sociological problems facing people who were food insecure. Students learned skills like communicating, 
graphing, charting, collecting data, and making sense of the world around them. Students were then paired up into groups where they took several weeks to create several different projects. Over the course of four weeks, they narrowed six projects down to one realistic idea. So at first, we all went into our mini groups, and Mr. Vianz presented us with the, pro the problem that some people were going without food, some people were hungry. So we all came up with six ideas. For example, ours was like an online website, a volleyball tournament, and we took those six ideas, we narrowed them down to three, and we picked the best out of those three, and the one that we picked was a talent show. So we were talking about how, what, how they would get in and like watch the talent show. They'll be, they have to pay food, they have to pay with food or money, and if they wanted to participate, they had to pay seven dollars or bring in five cans we decided to incorporate a way that we could help the community of Fuqua Verena with people that ha were food insecure. That being said, what does that mean? And so I wanted the students to investigate how that affected our community, did it affect our school, did it affect our students, and what could we do to help reduce food insecurity within the Fuqua Verena community. My students decided to come up with a lovely idea where we would create a food box to where students would collect uh, canned food and be able to place that in our community where people that were experiencing food insecurity could go to the box and get food, canned go goods, sanitary products, um, hygiene products, without the embarrassment of other people maybe looking on. So they decided to create a food box to where people could look in there, see what the items were, and to know kind of what goods we needed to donate. Um, they were very excited about working on this and even getting down to the exact measurements of what we needed to do and what we needed to incorporate within the food box. We are we have a food security box, which is for people who don't have enough food in the community. So it's going to be a box. We're going to fill it with cans. And so if you'd like to make a donation, you could just put the cans. You could give them to us, and we will put them in the box. And people who don't have enough food or are food insecure can come there and retrieve food. To get our idea out there about the food insecurity box, we hosted a dinner and invited people and we told them that to help the community we made this box so um, we could um, donate food to the people that are food insecurity which means that they don't have enough food and we were um, hoping they could help out. I would recommend it because it's less work on the teacher. Uh, it really allows the kids to bring their own individual uh, skill sets to it and uh, it's a lot of fun for them. The collaboration, the working together, especially when there's a service learning aspect to it. Yes, I do like it better because instead of just kind of furthering our own intelligence, this time we not only helped ourselves in learning about the community but we also helped develop and focus new ways to aid the community. This project-based learning activity was great because it allowed our students to learn much differently than they normally would. They were really at the center of instruction here. They were at the center of all the learning that took place. The teachers really just acted as um, facilitators. Uh, the students were allowed to dive deep into the data on their own and we tried to lead them to specific points, but in the end it was them who did all the learning themselves. Uh, ultimately, we want to include more project-based learning assignments in the future. Uh, what's great about this is in years past, we've done projects as large as entire grade levels. Uh, this year, our project was simply half of the seventh grade. And what's great about this is you can scale this as big or as small as you want. We really want to try to show other teachers around the county that um, it doesn't need to be this giant thing, it can be something as simple as letting students experiment on their own, letting students kind of explore on their, their own. It's really an inquiry-based approach. We want students to um, 
see the real world applications of what they're learning. We don't want them to feel like they are learning just for the sake of learning. They need to be shown that they're learning because they can take these things and apply them and create things on their own. We really hope in the future we get to do more of these activities. Um, we really want to thank the Wakehead Partnership uh, and our business partners for giving us this opportunity to um, take what we've learned from them and um, share it with our students, share it with our staff, and uh, ultimately share it with our own community.